So I'm Charles Reed Anderson, and I'm the founder of CRA and Associates. And it's an IoT advisory firm that works across the IoT ecosystem. So what we do is advise cities on smart city initiatives, I advise enterprise customers on solutions, a lot of the ICT vendors and their go-to-market strategy. And on the investment and funding side, I work with some of the VCs, some of the startups, and the banks to advise them on the market. So I basically sit in the middle of all of those. So the keynote was actually quite fun this year because it's difficult to always find something new to talk about. And normally you talk about the opportunities and the threats and the challenges. Um, so what we did this year is I actually did a performance appraisal on IoT. And I looked at what's happened with IoT from 2014 to today. Because back then we had a lot more hype around it. There was a lot more of these inflated figures of how many connections and how much money it's going to be worth. And now we're in more of the realistic phase. So I wanted to see what's actually changed over those period of years and what it's going to take to make it successful going forward. So I would say it's sort of split across Asia. Um, it's still the calm before the storm for most of it. Um, I'll be honest, when I reached out to all my contacts before doing my keynote, all of them said the market has not moved forward in the last year. However, there is one place where the market has moved forward massively, and that's in China. And it's just exploding across um, some of the low power networks. Um, you're seeing operators like China Unicom, uh, China Telecom, and China Mobile growing their net subscribers by 40% in the first six months of this year. So that market has just moved ahead of the rest of the world right now. China's a market where everything in the ecosystem is working together. So you have the government, which has always been good about setting these five-year policies and five-year plans. So they set everyone down the path um, around things like MBIOT, and they're trying to drive a certain number of initiatives and technology. So you got the ICT vendors then line up behind that, so they know what they need to accomplish. Um, I think one of the interesting sides is the enterprises. Because of how much growth you have all the way across China, not just in the big cities, but in the mid-market as well, as you move this whole next generation into the middle class, it creates opportunities not only in the super front end of the market, um, but all the way through. Um, so it really allows it to move forward. But I think the reason it's really moved forward the fastest is more on the investment and funding side. So the challenge we face in a lot of the markets around ASEAN is a lot of the vendors will price their solutions for countries like Japan or Korea or Singapore. Um, but the thing is you can't sell that in a developing market. What China's done is produced a lot of these products and services locally, um, so it's priced for the local market, and that means they don't have the same financial challenges going forward. So for, with IoT, um, everyone thinks it's all about technology, and it isn't. We have the technology to secure and deliver any type of solution you want right now. Um, but we don't, and I think one of the main challenges is across this ecosystem. So first of all, it's very complex to pull together multiple products from multiple vendors to create one solution. Um, so that's one of the challenges. But on the other side, within the customers, they still tend to just give it to IT. Um, what's happening on the good news side is that senior management, about 86%, now support these initiatives. But the bad news is, while we think we can drive things like competitive advantage and we can enhance the customer experience, we're not going out there and engaging the strategy teams or the product teams and the marketing teams. And that creates a big risk for these engagements. Um, you know, when you talk about increasing or improving the customer experience, but you don't involve marketing, there's a good chance you will, but it might be negative. And then on the ugly side, and this is what's really bad, only 12% of companies actually are going to be engaging end users as a stakeholder in the process which means we're still adopting this build it and they will come approach or we're just going to push it down their throats and make them use it. And that doesn't work. That's why companies like Cisco and McKinsey say that three quarters of IoT initiatives um, or digital transformation projects aren't successful. Um, so we need to work together across more stakeholders and get them involved in the process. I still think it's early days for every city in this game. Um, there's a lot of things that we can smart enable, um, whether it's going to be infrastructure-centric or citizen-centric. However, most cities focus on the infrastructure-centric side because that's where you can get a tangible business benefit right away. It's easier to justify the ROI. But what Taipei has done that's different is they've actually pulled out their PMO separately from the government. And their job is to work with the three main parties. So they have the government as a customer. So they proactively engage 30 different government um, organizations to identify what types of products and services they wanted to take to market. Then they went out and ran initiatives with 30,000 different citizens to understand what they wanted on the citizen-centric side. 
And what's really interesting is they've gone out and engaged 400 plus ICT vendors. Now this is some of the biggest ICT brands in the world, as well as some small startups, to start delivering on these initiatives. And what's really interesting and different is, in most cities, it's that project management office or program management office becomes the blocker into the government, but their job is, is to facilitate it. And why that's interesting is they've now been able to deliver 135 proof of concepts in the first year, and a lot of these things are on that citizen-centric side. So they've gone to this phase now where they can really experiment and see what is going to work. I guarantee you not all of them will succeed, but even if half of them do, that's going to be a lot of new use cases we didn't have 12 months ago. Uh, the highlight of the event, I think, was definitely getting my espresso made by a robot over at the Tata stand. Um, I love my espresso, I love robotics, I love AI. Um, so seeing that all come together and actually make a decent espresso, I was quite impressed with that. So the event in three words, the uh, hell of a lot of fun. It's kind of cheating, but close enough.